This is going to be a very short thing because I'd like to get the conference as a whole back on schedule. Um, welcome to the KD Community Goals talk about privacy and security by default. Um, the Sebastian, who was originally going to give this talk, uh, could not attend Academy uh, for personal reasons, and so we're, we're doing a bit of a, a lightning talk squash together. Hey, here's a bunch of things that KDE, the KDE community is working on in terms of privacy. So the background to this, this community goal is that in 2017, we had the long drawn out KDE community goals process, which resulted at the end of 2017 in one particular fabricator task. Uh, you can look that up, it's public. Um, it will tell you what was decided and what kind of, what was decided to work on for the next three to five years. We have a long-term goal and long-term commitment to protecting privacy and maintaining user security. Uh, we can boil it down to one sentence, KDE software enables and promotes privacy, but there's also a much longer description if you really want to look at it. Um, one of the important things that came out of the whole privacy uh, discussion is that free software can offer its users a fifth freedom the, a fifth freedom, which is the freedom to decide where your data goes and to keep your data your own if you so choose. Uh, because a lot of proprietary software nowadays, you pay for it because it's free as in beer, you pay for it with your privacy, with your data, by giving up something uh, that other people apparently want to know, um, which has value for them. So KDE software, the stuff we, as a community, produce can be better, can be unique by promoting a better experience. One that, better in the sense of, by promoting an experience that preserves privacy and respects your privacy by default. See, we, we as a community, we don't need to be paid by uh, giving up, by you, or by our users giving up their privacy. So by default, we don't leak. Plasma doesn't leak information onto the, net, onto the internet or to its distributors. Applications don't leak information either. Now to do this, to make the KDE software support this, we have a lot of work to do because we've got to make sure that all of our applications actually live up to this promise. And so we've got a little panel here for uh, KDE developers from all across the stack, from the low down, uh, encryption level uh, stuff up to, hey, let's make an entire phone operating system. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a real quick four presentations in a row uh, where each of these fine KDE developers tells you what they've been working on. Um, so we need to switch back to starting at the top of the stack. Um, um, besides our applications not leaking, right, there is um, a related problem that for some application, um, there is simply no privacy aware alternative or free alternative that doesn't leak your data. Um, digital assistance is uh, one of those subjects. Um, the part I looked at is um, specifically the travel related features. Um, you might know the uh, stuff like TripBuild or the uh, features in Gmail that automatically read your email and uh, extract all your uh, trip-related data. Gives you a nice unified itinerary and all that. Very convenient, um, doesn't cost you anything apart from your privacy. Um, I mean, it's, you'll find the same problem with, for example, the fitness trackers and, and home automation and all of that stuff. So, um, most of what we are looking at applies to that as well. Um, by the way, we have a problem there. Um, even if you just look at um, travel-related data, for example, that has your name, your address, your birthday, um, a lot of financial details, um, your credit card number, um, movement profiles, passport number. So, I mean, this is as sensitive as it gets. Um, not necessarily something you want to share with uh, Google or any other services. 
Um, so what can we do about that? Um, build our own alternative, of course. Um, and that's what we have been doing in this specific area since the Rwanda meeting last year. Um, and we actually have the first bits of this um, in the uh, last two application releases. Um, this path in, in KML to extract this data locally on your machine without going through any kind of central server. Um, augmenting it with Wikidata data, also compiled in, so no network access for this. Um, sent to your phone via KDE Connect in a KDE mobile application. And um, that's my itinerary for flying here. And I actually managed to pass through the security check with this, so this actually works. Um, there is one big challenge in this, and this is getting um, live data for delays and, and so on, because there's no free source for that. We need to talk to vendor APIs. Um, but yeah, I have a, a full-scale talk on this uh, tomorrow. Um, but we'll kind of cover a bit more of these details. So I guess that we can do one step down to the no, one step form. down is KMail okay. headers. Heineken will uh, uh, talk a little bit more about emails and encryption. And the, the encryption we normally talk about is encrypting the body. So it, encrypting the content is one solved problem with GNU PGP and SMIME. Um, but we have more data where we expose uh, things we want to, we don't want to expose and that are all the mail headers. And uh, there, actually, Memory Hole uh, tries um, to make sure that also headers can be encrypted. Uh, they actually encrypt it also inside uh, the, the body, so we have to extract them. And, um, but the problem is, if we use Kmail, for example, then, yeah, we see an encrypted blob and can't access the header, so we don't see from whom the mail is, um, and also the subject isn't um, accessible without uh, decrypting the mail. So from, I'm trying to solve this problem and um, de decrypting the mail directly um, inside Kmail to extract the headers and display them so that you can use them as an unencrypted mail and do like searching, because currently you can't search in uh, encrypted emails. And if you encrypt the headers too, it's even worse than you can't search uh, from, for a subject, for example. <laughs> Going down one more step in the stack. Go up. My name is Andrew Heinecke and I work on Cleopatra and for my company Intervention GmbH on all things related to GNUPG uh, and mostly on the Windows distribution of GNUPG and Cleopatra GPT for Win. So I was asked to uh, talk a bit about uh, Kmail and eFail because uh, probably if you uh, read some technical news you have heard of this um, as this was a huge story um, where the Electronic Frontier Foundation basically said, oh, people have to stop using email crypto and uninstall everything, which was very bad advice. <laughs> uh, especially because Kmail um, was tested, for example, and was shown to be nearly unaffected. Uh, and this is because uh, Kmail uses secure and privacy protecting defaults. For example, it doesn't uh, enable HTML by default and no external references 
which were used in eFail to uh, extract private data. Um, another big thing was that uh, some main clients uh, actually ignored an open PGP integrity protection feature uh, because uh, UPG would print first the plain text and then just a warning, oh, the message has been manipulated on transport. Uh, Kmail doesn't because Kmail is basically a UPG reference implementation which uses UPG as intended uh, through libraries and there you get a proper error and everything is fine. Uh, low worthy in the last uh, two years, uh, the KPPIM libraries for GNUPG, GPGME Plus Plus and QGPGME um, made it upstream and are now part of the official GPGME distribution and they are already picked up by other software like LibreOffice uses GPGME Plus Plus which I find a bit cool because this was the KD pin list uh, in the past. Thank you, Ampe. Oh, no. Oh, Could I stop? <laughs> yeah, um, just uh, to say a few words uh, um, what we are currently working on. Um, the most, um, the highest goal is basically to automate as much as possible. A user shouldn't need to use Cleopatra. Uh, a user shouldn't know uh, what a certificate is, what a key is to have basic protection that uh, he can use private email without uh, any agencies reading them, etc. Uh, for this we already automated uh, key discovery um, with uh, the use of a web key directory. If you are interested in that, just uh, search for web key directory and you will get more information. Uh, Kmail already supports this, so uh, if you, for example, write an email to myself, Kmail can automatically find the uh, key to use for to encrypt for me. And the next uh, big thing we want to have is uh, automated trust, so you don't have to uh, sign other keys, uh, check fingerprints, etc. Tracking the communication history, uh, if you have used the key for the same person for a long time, then it's fine. And yeah, this is what we'll be working on in the next two years or so. Okay. Thank you, Andre. So that was all a dive down in the stack, but now we're going to go broad and You were, you were almost there. Keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There. Stop. Here's Bouchan.
generally the privacy model is uh, your data is safe with us and we are not selling it. But, but uh, the privacy model of KD in, in case of plasma mobiles, your data is safe with yourself only and we don't need your data. Uh, so with the plasma mobile, we are currently, the plasma mobile is still not the, you, still not usable for the users, but we are actively building upon the actively building a solution which which will which will be uh, which will not track data, which will provide you a usable product which doesn't uh, basically share sell your data to third party third party companies. And also we are at the same time we are actively trying to actively trying to improve the situation with the mobile devices where basically you are running an outdated, so outdated software version on your mobile devices which, which, which was released like 3 to 4 years ago or basically even 10 years ago and it it have like already too many known, known bugs in it so yeah so this is my project and I will be talking about it after this talk in after next